Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we are going to be talking about the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy, or DAPT, after PCI. First, uh, it's important to remember that the purpose of DAPT is to reduce the risk of stent thrombosis, in other words, clotting of a stent, uh, which is often a sudden uh, catastrophic process. Stent thrombosis is very different, uh, but sometimes confused with stent restenosis, uh, which is the slow, gradual regrowth of tissue inside the stent. DAPT has no effect on stent restenosis. Stent restenosis uh, is controlled with antiproliferative agents, uh, such as everolimus, which are slowly eluded uh, from the uh, drug-eluting stent. Okay, so the most recent guidelines on uh, DAPT in patients with CAD uh, were published in 2016. So uh, guideline documents are very helpful, but remember that guidelines are just that, guidelines. Uh, they are not the law of the land. Uh, each patient is different, and physician judgment is important for each individual case. All right, so I will uh, stop my preaching now. Uh, so with all that said, uh, what do the latest guidelines suggest? Here are the guideline suggestions for DAPT after PCI with DES in a nutshell. The uh, duration of DAPT uh, depends on patient presentation. If PCI was done for an acute coronary syndrome, in other words, a non-STEMI or a STEMI or unstable angina, then the guidelines recommend 12 months of DAPT for most patients. For patients with high bleeding risk, it may be reasonable to stop after six months. For some scenarios, it may be reasonable to go on for longer than 12 months. Um, this uh, uh, may be based on something called a DAPT score, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If PCI was done for stable coronary disease, then the guidelines recommend six months of DAPT uh, for most patients. Uh, for uh, high uh, bleeding risk patients, uh, it may be reasonable to stop after three months. In low bleeding risk patients, it may be reasonable to go on for longer than six months. Now, are there cases where you might want to prolong DAP for longer than 12 months? Um, in uh, 2014, uh, the DAP study uh, found that uh, for DAP for 30 months compared to one year, uh, reduced stent thrombosis and MACE, but at a cost of increased bleeding. So based on this study, uh, Robert Ye and his colleagues uh, developed a DAP score in 2016 to help identify patients for whom a longer DAP duration might be reasonable. Uh, some of these uh, factors are intuitive. Uh, 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 Safnus Vangraf PCI, uh, smaller stents, MI, uh, intuitively increase the risk of thrombosis and favor longer DAPT. Uh, older age uh, increases the risk of bleeding and therefore favors shorter DAPT. So in essence, if your DAP score is greater than or equal to two, then prolonged DAP for up to 30 months uh, may be reasonable. On the other hand, if your DAP score is less than two, then prolonged DAP uh, is not recommended. So what about the opposite extreme, uh, ultra short one month DAP after DES? Well, this might be useful in high bleeding risk patients and could obviate the need for bare metal stents. Uh, there are two recent studies, uh, Zions 28 and Onyx 1 Clear, that looked at this question, and both studies showed favorable outcomes and low incidence of stent thrombosis. However, realize that these were non-randomized analyses versus uh, historical controls and had strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. So while the results are tantalizing, uh, they are not yet in guidelines. However, they do lend some support for one month of DAPT in a select group of patients. And some experts have argued uh, that these results could essentially make bare metal stents obsolete. Okay, so leaving PCI aside for now, what about cabbage patients? Um, for patients with ACS who get a cabbage, uh, DAPT uh, should be continued for 12 months. Uh, this is a class one recommendation. For patients who get a cabbage after uh, for uh, stable coronary disease, 12 months of DAP may be reasonable. And for patients who get a hybrid procedure or cabbage after recent PCI, then the appropriate post-PCI DAP duration uh, would be applicable. All right, so we covered PCI and cabbage. What about uh, patients with ACS who get thrombolytics or just medical therapy? 
well, fairly straightforward here. Uh, 12 months of DAPT after ACS with six months reasonable if there is high bleeding risk. Continuing DAP beyond 12 months in patients without bleeding risk may be reasonable. And for PCI patients, again, uh, the DAP score uh, may be useful here. What about DAP for stable coronary disease? Well, if there is no history of MI, PCR, or cabbage, uh, guidelines suggest that there is no benefit for DAPT. Um, as we discussed earlier, for patients who get a cabbage for stable coronary disease, 12 months of DAPT uh, may be reasonable. And as we also discussed earlier, for patients who receive DES for stable coronary disease, six months of DAPT is recommended for most patients, uh, but three months of DAPT may be reasonable for patients with high bleeding risk. Okay, uh, to summarize, uh, specifically for PCI patients, we get DES. Uh, for ACS patients, uh, 12 months of DAPT for most patients, uh, with six months reasonable for high bleeding risk. The DAPT score is useful to decide whether continuing DAPT for longer than 12 months, up to 30 months, uh, is beneficial. For stable coronary disease patients, six months of DAPT for most patients, with three months reasonable for high bleeding risk patients. DAPT score may be useful here as well. As far as ultra short one month of DAPT after DES, uh, there are certainly new promising data out there, and I suspect that guideline changes uh, are coming on the horizon. Thank you for watching.